Hey guys, it's your girl Blessing and welcome to my latest review of Kindred. Uh, today I'll be discussing episode 7 and episode 8, the season finale. And before we even start, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, there's going to be lots of spoilers in this latest review. Um, episode 7 is called Jane and episode 8 is called Alice. So um, in this episode, we have Maggie, who is Margaret's sister. She comes to visit. Kevin and Rufus and Tom um, go to a bar where Rufus, you know, gets drunk. Uh, also, Luke uh, accompanied them. So Luke, uh, Rufus gets drunk. Kevin is subjected to uh, a rape scene uh, where uh, an enslaved man rapes an enslaved woman and that woman's name enslaved woman's name is jane so hence the title of this um episode so of course um kevin is disgusted by this you know he's you know from the present and you know he knows the history of slavery and you know this is not his reality so he leaves the bar Tom follows him where he proceeds to tell Kevin that he sold Luke away. So he leaves. Then we have Margaret and Maggie attempting to flee with Rufus uh, in the middle of the night while Tom is gone. Um, Cause Ma Maggie, she's never liked Tom. She doesn't like the way he treats her sister and Rufus. So Dana sees this attempt uh, and uh, she attempts to stop it because she feels like she's here in the past to help Rufus out and to get Rufus and Carrie together because she feels that they are her ancestors and she needs to keep them together. So, you know, so that her line can exist. And so she has to keep Rufus with her. So in, in her, attempt to stop this situation she tells margaret that she's been the one that has been saving rufus all this time and in kind margaret calls her the devil so of course they leave so her plan dana's plan wasn't successful so then while all this is happening um kevin and tom are returning back to the plantation and while this is happening um, they start talking about um, Kevin's um, relationship with Dana and Tom feels that it's inappropriate. Then Kevin proceeds to remind um, Tom about his relationship with Winnie and the lens he went th through, you know, to get her back, you know, by starving the slaves and whatnot. So, of course, um, Tom doesn't like this called being called out on his um uh, double-sidedness uh, you know and he feels this a disrespect uh, uh towards him so he abandons um kevin in the middle of the forest at gunpoint so he leaves then kevin is forced to fend for himself so he goes looking for olivia he goes to her cabin where he proceeds to tell her that you know luke has been sold away uh, he's afraid for um, Dana being left alone with Tom. So Olivia sees this as um, uh, her needing to leave the plantation sooner than later, rather than later with Alice. So she goes looking for Olivia while she's gone. Um, Tom, um, Kevin realizes that Winnie is still in the cabin in her uh, in that uh, uh, space um, below. So she convinces him to let her out of her, out of the hole that she's in. But you know, Alice, our little Alice, she's still in the cabin and she advises him not to do this, but he does it. And when she gets out, she finds a knife and holds it against him and escapes the cabin. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, so he proceeds to go running after her. And while all this is happening, Tom gets home, back home, he attempts to um, uh, hit on on Dana, and of course she, um, you know, spurns spurns his advances. 
So the episode ends with um, Kevin running after Winnie to try to get her back. Episode eight opens with um, Olivia, newly uh, still in her early pregnancy with Dana in 1989 in Brooklyn in the Brownstone talking to her mother-in-law. You know, they're talking about motherhood but it seems like their relationship isn't the best that, you know, the mother-in-law is very judgmental. So yeah, their relationship, yeah, is probably typical sometimes of the type of relationships that mothers-in-laws and daughter-in-laws have. So yeah, it wasn't, didn't seem like a good, that they had a very good relationship. Um, Kevin, he catches up with Winnie Winnie proceeds to tell him that, you know, she's not going back to Tom because that's what Kevin was afraid of. That's what everybody was afraid of, that, you know, she would run back to Tom, you know. And of course, that would bring unforetold circ um, unfor circumstances to everyone involved. But she tells him that, you know, she's not going back to Tom, that she's just escaping, period. And she demands um, his clothes. So Kevin gives her gives her his clothes, you know, she's going to attempt to escape as a, as a man. And, you know, her hair is already short. So he does this. He lets her go. Meanwhile, um, Tom catches um, Dana in Winnie's cabin with one of his books. So he accuses her of stealing that book. So in Dana, in her, not so bright mind uh, attempts to re uh, um, remedy the situation by telling Tom that she will teach him how to read. So she should have known because, you know, she's in the present, she's from the present, present, and she knows about slavery, the history of slavery in in the United States, how, you know, slave masters did not want their slaves to learn how to read because if they knew how to read, it would give them ideas. So why did she suggest this? I, sometimes I feel like Dana, she's not too bright. Sorry. That's just my opinion. So of course, Tom being the cruel evil person that he is, he drags her out of the cabin into the, into the outside and proceeds to start whipping her over and over and over in her back. You know, Dana, she's losing consciousness. Her mother walks, um, you know, finds this scene. She attempts to, you know, save her daughter, to protect her daughter. And, you know, while this is happening, um, Olivia, Tom pushes Olivia on top of, of, Dana's back and he's attempting to whip them and they poof disappear. Dana has um, popped back up into the present without Kevin. She also managed to take Kevin's phone with her. So she pops back into the present and it harkens back into the opening scene of episode one where she's on the floor calling out for Kevin. It's like a full circle moment. Police are, you know, beating at her door, knocking at her door. She uh, eventually lets them in. So the the whippings that she got from Tom explains her bloody back. So she lets the cops in. All the neighbors are basically gathered outside, including that nosy Karen. Um, eventually, um, Kevin's sister also shows up. Um, she's the one that actually called the police and not the nosy Karen. So of course she's worried about Kevin, about, she's distraught about, distraught about leaving Kevin in the past, uh, cause she doesn't really know how to get to the past. All she knows is that, you know, Rufus calls her and she goes, she doesn't know how to just snap back into the past on her own. So she's left Kevin in the past. In the past, Tom is going crazy because he saw them disappear. You know, he's questioning 
Kevin and you know and like you know where are they where are they and you know of course they don't have the answer for that Dana she's able to talk to her, her aunt her aunt comes to to visit her and then Dana she proceeds to tell her aunt Nisi about what she's been through how she's traveled into the past um seeing her mom uh, how you know, she's left Kevin in the past. And this time her aunt believes her because her aunt literally basically saw her disappear with Kevin in that closet at the hospital. So, you know, she's trying to calm her knees down. She and her niece. So she basically gives, um, helps her niece find, helps Dana find the family, quote unquote, family Bible with uh, all the family tree in it. And, you know, all this time, Dana thinks it's Carrie, that's her uh, ancestor, but all along it's Alice, that's her ancestor. So so it, 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 it got me to wondering and thinking maybe all this time, Olivia knew, figured out that Alice was that, was that ancestor. So that's why she didn't really want to leave her alone in the past. That's why she was like, you know, trying to escape with Alice and what was re was reluctant to go back into the into the present. So um, Dana, you know, and Denise, her aunt Nisi, uh, figure Alice is that ancestor, and then they get a phone call from Alan, her uncle, telling them that Olivia has been found by the New York um, NYPD. And uh, and it ends there. So, so I wasn't gonna give the second season a chance if they had one because I wasn't really moved by this whole series. It didn't, you know, catch my fancy. It didn't really appeal for me and it was dragging too much and too slow for me. And it just seemed like the storylines were giving the white characters more, more airplay than they should. Um, it seemed like it was too focused on them and their, and their, situation more than the black characters. So I wasn't really feeling it. I wasn't really, you know, I liked Quantum Leap as a kid, but that that type of time travel was more appealing to me than this going back into slavery and with the main character being so not too bright to me because she makes a lot of dumb decisions. And she acts like uh, a, a 20th century or 21st century person um, back in the past where she should have not been doing that. She should have been more acclim acclimating herself to the to her surroundings. So I wasn't going to give it another watch, but <laughs> what went down in the final minutes of that, of the episode eight, like said, yeah, I need to watch this and see how it ends. So if there is a second um, season, I definitely will be watching it to see how everything unfolds, to see what happened with Olivia, to see what even happened with her father and to see how, whether Alice and Rufus will get reunited again. So. I hope you guys enjoyed my little review and hope you'll join me for more reviews. And if you want to leave any comments, leave it down below and I'll try to answer or respond to you as uh, fast or as best as I can. So until next time, see you guys. Bye.